Welcome to another virtual episode of Face the Facts. It's good to see you all here once again. Joining me on our wonderful virtual screens, we have Cam Newton, I mean Phil Healy from NorCam Studios. Welcome, Phil. Yo, how's it going? And we have Smokey the Bear, Tom Smith in the house in his NHL background right there. Smokey the Bear, huh? All right. I'll go with it. I'll roll with it. I'll roll with it. Sure, whatever. (laughs) We actually do have quite a bit to talk about today on this show because we have a big game coming up for the Patriots this upcoming weekend. We have the Celtics who are Dunbar. We have a Stanley Cup champion. And... We also can talk about the exciting MLB wildcard playoffs that are going on right now. And I don't say that sarcastically. I actually say that because I think it's very cool, because I'm even interested in it, um, that's happening right now. So, And a firing of a Red Sox manager. forgot about that. So we'll talk about all those things here today on this show. I want to read it off first with the Patriots. The Patriots had a nice victory over the LA Raiders on Sunday afternoon. From an unsuspected hero. My goodness, Rex Burkhead, what a ball game you had there, sir. Why don't we open it up to Tom first and just the overall feeling of how you felt after that victory. Um, well, I mean, not only Burkhead, even, even Sony Michelle had a pretty big game. Yeah, where'd he go? He, he came out of nowhere, huh? That was great to see. Yeah, I mean, Bel- Belichick must have said something to him when they found out that uh, White wasn't going to be playing that game or something. I don't know, because he, he was huge. The troops were definitely riled up, and I was very excited about that. It was very good. And, uh, and new, I mean, the whole team – the team looked a lot better than week two um, than they did week two, for sure. And uh, once, once White comes back, I think it's going to be – they're going to be tough to beat. Once White they comes back, without, it's... Um, they are without David Andrews, their center. He had surgery yeah. on his thumb. He's going to be out for a few weeks of action. So that's a big loss. Hopefully they can be able to be okay uh, for a short amount of time. It, it, I, was it, happy, I was still happy with the overall performance I saw from the line and on the offensive side of the ball. I'm still very concerned on the defense. Yeah, I mean, the, the, Raiders, the Raiders were tough. And uh, I mean, they're, they're they're a tough team this year, but our defense definitely looked better against them than they did against um, Seattle. Um, Seattle, I think, is a better opponent than the Raiders. It's not to say the Raiders are a joke. The Raiders should have a pretty decent team. This isn't like the Miami Dolphins or the New York Jets that stink up the house, and if you lose, it's the end of the world. This week, though. There can't be really any mistakes against the Chiefs. Phil, what was your overall thoughts on the game? Did you see happen to see any of it on Sunday? I did, and uh, I think Tom's right. I think Belichick probably said something to Michelle. He's probably like, hey, you know, change the pace. We want you to gain yards this week. And he's like, all right, I'll try. And then he just uh, – he gained, well, he had like an 87-yard uh, week. It was pretty good. But Burkhead, I don't know. To me, he's not a surprise. It's like one of those things like they have like 80 different running backs and just yeah, like, like – yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a fleet of them, and they just kind of switch out what they're going to do game plan-wise. I think that's – I mean, their whole – the last uh, Super Bowl they won, it was pretty much can you run the ball well and can you play action pass uh, and also, you know, uh, throw to your uh, running backs. Uh, do you have a, a, a good amount of running backs who can catch? And I think Michelle, if he keeps – because he had a couple catches in this game too, right, uh, if I yeah, recall. Yeah. He did. Yep. And Bur- Burkhead is a, but Burkhead is that guy. He actually can run pretty well, and he can uh, he catch the uh, ball pretty well. Or right, hold on one second. My key with Burkhead is the health. He looked great this week. Is he going to get dinged up this week and not be uh, not be a performer this upcoming? I hope not. But you got three touchdowns from him. Had a heck of a job that was there. Can that carry over? And I think that's my biggest question when it comes to Burkhead. Tom, I don't know what you have to say on it. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the health is obviously a factor. Um, but, I mean, he's really, our, he's really our goal line guy when White's out. And even when White is in, there, you re- you, we rarely see White on goal line plays or red zone plays even. Um, I mean, what, my other concern for this weekend is 
uh, Newton's passing. Like it w- it was better than the first two weeks um, this past week, but I mean it, it's it's definitely still a concern. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot more mobility from uh, Cam this week against the Chiefs uh, than we have the other three games. Do you think the Patriots can get the win here against the Chiefs? I think if they do, it's going to be very close. I think it's going to be almost like a Seattle game. But uh, if, it, if it's like a Seattle game, I think the Patriots will pull it out. I'm not going to be shocked if they lose. And I think one of the things that we actually might see exploited here this upcoming weekend is our kicking game and special teams. I think that as much as Newton can lead this team and the offense has shown that they've been able to compete and be a solid team here in the NFL, the defense is going to struggle here against the much superior, most likely the best opponent they've played so far outside of Seattle. See the Seattle and Kansas City, who's probably your best team in the NFL, my thought. Could be, could be either or. But I think your kicking game is going to be extremely important here in this game, and I have zero faith when it comes to the kicking game. I cannot, oh, I... cannot stand what we have right now for kicking, and it's got to change. It's got to change. I hold my breath every kick that's made. I hold my breath. I mean, it's sad when your your kicker can only kick something from 30 yards out, if <laughs> if anything. Uh, we say kicker. That's Nick Folk. That is the kicker. Yeah, if you um, want to call him a kicker. He he looks like a, like a lump like Ben Roethlisberger out there trying to kick a football, and I'm not to say a, a chubby chubby unathletic man can't get the job done. I just don't have any faith when it comes to him. There's got to be somebody else that's out there that can get the job done here. Like, can they hold open tryouts during practice Practice for a fan just to come in and kick the freaking ball? Yeah, right. I, I cannot believe how long we have, we have gone on with this atrociousness at kicker. It's got to come back and bite us in the ass. It really is. So yeah, I'm not – I don't – if I have the kicking game here for the Patriots, and I tell you, I think it's the Achilles heel right now. I think it's going to be your deciding factor in this Kansas City game. It, that, it wouldn't shock me. Um, definitely wouldn't surprise me. It, it's it's, it's going to be a tightly competitive game, um, and it's all going to – I mean, it, 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 like you said, it's going to come down to the second day, the, um, the kicking, the special teams, and the, and the defense, really. I also they have, they have a better kicker than you, by the way. They have than us. Oh, way better. I think yeah. it's uh, 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 Harrison Bucker. He's a one. He's probably the best kicker in, in football right now. I mean, a, a lot of a lot of teams yeah. have better kickers than us. Wow. Well, I think, I think <laughs> one of the Patriots cheerleaders out there a kicker, and they probably get the job done. I mean, come yeah. on. I think um, I think the only other team that has a worse kicker than us is whoever has Gostowski. <laughs> I'd take Kostowski back at this point. I, I would take a kicker back on a bad hip. He's with the Titans, I think. Yeah, the Titans, yeah. We don't want him, though, because they have nine cases of uh, corona. Oh, yeah, stay out there. Get that, get that crap away from me. No thanks. Stay out there. My, my X Factor here, though, for this weekend happens to be a person who should be your stud week in and week out on defense, and that's Gilmore. He has been an absolute joke to start this season. I don't know if he's lost a step or if he's not mentally in this or whatnot, but I feel like every single time somebody tries to match up with him and he goes and tries to defend, it's either a pass interference, it's something that really significantly hurts the team. And that's something that I hope can be changed and fixed leading into this huge week here. I mean, a couple a couple of the pass interference calls were absolute jokes, though. I mean, they, yeah. they, there were a couple that shouldn't have even been called. But the one – the uh, I mean, the one against uh, the Raiders this past weekend could have really hurt us in the end if we weren't playing as well as we were on offensively. Oh, totally, totally. Luckily, our offense was more superior, better, and we got the job done. We can't make these mistakes this upcoming weekend. So, my overall opinion, sadly, I want to be wrong. If I'm wrong, that's great. 
I think that what, what you'll see here is the Patriots will lose against Kansas City. I think it's going to be something like 34-20, something in that ballpark. And it's going to be one of those games where the Patriots are going to have to go back to the drawing board. And I think the Patriots will be back onto a um, a two and two record. I think that's what will happen there. Uh, I'm going to be bold here, and I'm going to say both teams are going to score over thirty. I think I, I think, I I think it's I think it's going to be like a thirty eight thirty five kind of game or something. I hope that that's I hope that that's the case because if that's the case, I think that that would be. Well, it would definitely be a game where I would say that the Patriots are proving people that they're going to be competitive and they're going to get the job done. But I want to see more. Even if they get the win here, I want to see more. I want to see what they can do over the long stretch of the season to see how prepared and everything that they can get. Anything else on the Patriots? Then? I mean, we'll see. Like Tom said, yeah. like – he, I, guess, I guess your son has something to say, Phil. No, he just he was just telling me. Uh, the defense, like Tom said, like everyone's been saying, has to step up. Even if just not to get some pressure or contain Mahomes. I mean, Mahomes gonna, is going to get his points. It's just a matter of, like, I guess, timing. Like, just be the last one with the ball. That's what I say. You know what I mean? Keep, keep pace. We'll see. This will be a great – this is going to be a great show. Because I don't know if Kansas City's defense is really up to – I mean, I guess it is pretty decent because they contain Lamar Jackson a bit. But, I mean, can Jackson – is Jackson – uh, does he really pass? Is he really uh, – can he play the quarterback, you know, the pocket quarterback? And sometimes he can, but really, like this past week you saw against Kansas City, they took out his uh, tight end. But we'll see. I think Cam is using all – every receiver who comes in, it's just like the Avengers, everyone and their uncle is a member, or like every, uh, like, receiver. Like, hey, you off the practice squad, or you, you know, over there, what are you doing? I'm just sawing the grass. Oh, come on, catch a ball from Cam. And it's just simply he's throwing to everyone, and it's kind of awesome. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's – so. Uh, I just I just want to add that uh, – I just want to add that Cam has more experience than Lamar, too. So, I mean, I that's – guys talk for two seconds while I go get my front door. Give me one second. I'll let, talk, I'll let you two host. I'll be back in a minute. All right. I'll be right yeah, there. I, I just I – think, I think Cam has more experience than Lamar, and I think that's, that's going to be the uh, – Another another key factor in this game this weekend. No, I think um, you're right. But I mean, Kansas Kansas City is going to be tough for the next you know ten fifteen years. Yeah, well, until he gets hit by a truck. But who knows what will happen to Patrick? Yeah, Green. and I mean, I'm kind of banking on uh, Andy Reid not being a very good time management coach. That's that's going to be my. Uh, well, that's no, it's that's the old go-to, right? Yeah, that's that's going to be my go-to. I mean, that that's the go-to factor. And then we have uh, – I mean, I was kind of surprised that Belichick used all three of our timeouts in the third quarter there in the second half. Yeah, I was that a was little, a little bit surprising. too. Maybe he's just I playing mean, around with it. I we were know. up 17 points, so I wasn't really too worried. But <laughs> Well, just because the week before, I think we all – and rightfully so, we're um, – we're, let, uh, we're, criti- uh, we're criticizing him for not using a timeout, you know, appropriately down the last, like, 30 seconds, which could have gotten you two or three tries at the goal line. I know. Right. I know. He right. says the same. But uh, I also think, like, Mahomes is, I mean, the biggest Achilles heel for Reed of his uh, lack of time management, Mahomes has rendered that almost uh, moot because, you know, Mahomes can score at the drop of a hat and also, yeah, just throw him out there. They, yeah. they, he, they like to run with him, and he they boy, he knows how to run. They all know how to run with him. It's it's a it's a fly hiing offense. But we'll see. I think you're right. I think the Chiefs are at the top, at the AFC at the very least, as long as Mahomes is at the helm. Is at yeah. The helm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it's really unfortunate that I mean, the bill the Bills are still undefeated right now, so that's gonna that's gonna be another um, key component there. Because the bill is so. If the Bills uh, win and the Chiefs win, the Chiefs will still be at, at the top at, in first place in the uh, NFL. Uh, and, but if we beat the Chiefs, then the Bills become first place in the NFL. So, it's, it, it, as a Patriots fan, it's like, do we really do we want the Chiefs to be in first place in the NFL, or do we want the Bills? <laughs> and that that's the. 
That's, that's the point really that we're the picking. choice we kind of have to make when we're in rooting for uh, who we're rooting for. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of excited about the Bills. I'm not not going to lie. I mean, I, he, I'm, a big, he isn't. <laughs> I'm a big Stefan Diggs fan, so. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. That I, that was a pretty big uh, get for them. And I actually, because yeah. uh, was it, uh, what's it, not Doug Marone, or is it Doug Marone who's with the Bills now? I forget, no. or it was Doug Marone, the Eagles quarterback. But I just, like, I have a bunch of buddies who live in upstate New York, and the Bills have been out of it forever. I mean, I think it's, I think it's also good for the league that it's like yeah. you have the Bills back in that capacity. Yeah, and they're yeah. the only New we York team. Have, we actually have some sort of division now instead of having three <laughs> yeah. crappy teams. And... Well, yeah, because who else? Because uh, you have the Bills and who else? Oh, I guess Miami's not – I mean, Miami is now one and two. Yeah, I mean, Miami, Miami's kind of making a comeback, but, you know, yeah. Fitzpatrick is, you know, choke Patrick. And, <laughs> well, it's also you know, a whatever, whatever nickname yeah. you want to give him, he, yeah. he's, you know – Pick, pick Patrick. Pick Patrick. You know? I mean, he sent us home. <laughs> yeah. I know. I just thought well, it wasn't him. It was Kenyon Drake, really. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, he just, he killed us. Yeah. I just right. got a phone call that just said the show's been canceled. What happened? I left for five minutes and now we're done? Well, <laughs> I, I didn't show all of my uh, backside, but I showed enough, I guess. I mean... <laughs> No wonder. I mean, well, I mean, what are you going to do? I got bored, and uh, Tom's like, yeah, what are you never going to do? it? I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll prove you're right. I left, I left my dog Jake here in the hot seat. I put the headphones by him, but even he didn't know. He didn't know. No, I, he didn't want to touch it, Nick. He didn't want to touch any of this. Unbelievable. So thank you um, for doing that while I had to step away for a second. Yeah, no, we were just we were just talking about what was going to happen, whether if the Patriots won or not. With uh, you know, the Chiefs being in first place in the NFL and stuff. Yep. With the Bills. I think, I think what I want to do now is I want to transition over to Phil's um, Boston Celtics, if I want to call them the Boston Celtics. Um, hey, you know, you know, it could have, it would have been just me and Phil today, but uh, you ended up being correct, and uh, now. Oh, now that's right. Yeah. The show. <laughs> that's right. True. Which also, what else would you call them? If you want to call them the Boston Celtics. Uh, the Boston, let me think. There's a lot of different ones. I oh, sure. I, mean... <laughs> I, I want to keep family friendly because they're a family friendly. I thought you were going to be like the Albanaki like, uh, deserters the or something. The Boston, uh, Jesus, I don't know, something like that. I, well, I, I will say they didn't. Um, I think Paul Pierce said it best. I mean, defense didn't come first in an elimination game. So, I will say that it was, to my surprise, they got to the Eastern Conference Finals. Remember back a couple of weeks back when I said I didn't think Toronto was going to win game? I didn't think Boston was going to win Oh, yeah, game. yeah, I remember that. Uh, I mean, I I kind of felt like they, they were the better team against Toronto. Like, it just, I mean, sheer talent, I think. I also think they're better than the Heat on a, a day where it's just, on, well, maybe, I mean, clearly they weren't for the series, but. Uh, I, Toronto wasn't like Toronto was a good team. Oh, go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was even. I was just going like this. Um, oh, uh, I, I rather you you speak because you are our expert on these Celtics. Well, I'm just a fan. I just watch from afar. Basketball, well, as we know, isn't my forte. Uh, that's yours. So. And uh, my kid agrees I love somehow. To, I love to hear. I love to hear your opinion on it because you know a lot of times, Phil, I will give you credit. For it. You are right. Uh, sometimes right. don't inflate, don't inflate my ego too much. Cause then it would just, yeah, I just nothing. Uh, but no, Toronto is a, they're a good team and they had been there and they, you know, they'll play and they played you hard. They played it to seven and you should have, there, there were two games in there that you should have won. They should have closed. And I'll, uh, and you probably, I mean, you know, by now, by watching at least some of the Miami series, we don't know how to close out. We, yeah, we, we uh, the game oh, yeah. game five, we did a decent job of closing out. We won. It wasn't a close game, but Miami was um, was threatening a little bit. But you know, we closed it out in the sense like we just keep you know uh, foot on the pedal. But game six, you know what? We were up by six with like five minutes to go in the fourth, and that's an eternity, as a as a buddy of mine had said. But still, we were in the driver's seat, and it's just one of those things where we weren't closing out. And you had uh, a Bayou. Uh, uh, the center for Miami just kind of literally walking into uh, the uh, from the top Tyler of the key Hero and walking to the basket. Us. Yeah, Tyler Hero destroyed us, and 
Yeah, for one game, he had, well, for one or two. Andrew Iguodala, after he demolished them, which leads me to my point of... <laughs> I got to bounce him when he's doing it. Yeah, I guess you do. He takes it for a ride, too. That's the thing that I'm always, like... He definitely is playing me like a xylophone. Yeah, Andre Iguodala was somebody that was picked up at the deadline to get... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What did the Celtics do? Twirled their thumbs and did nothing. Well, they're, well, they're all. Why, yeah. No, you're right. I have to put on the blame block here Danny Ainge. It's the one championship since 2003. Only one. Yeah. He's been the GM since 2003. Oh, my God. That's right. He has. He has one championship. I'm sorry. That's not acceptable. The next thing, Brad Stevens. I've talked about it countless times. Left and right, I understand that there isn't an immediate person to put in this place. Who I think could be better? Well, the Clippers just fired Doc Rivers. Well, there you go. I would put Doc Rivers back into that spot in a heartbeat over Stevens right now. Uh, would he? That's the point. I don't know if he would. But uh, as he cries, he knows that Rivers won't be coming back. But someone actually had mentioned that Rivers might go to Philly, which I think would be awesome. It would, it would be great for the rivalry, and Philly could actually maybe uh, live up to its hype. But, uh, yeah, no, I think you, you, can, you can put your finger on a couple of things of why they lost. I think Steven should take some blame, and if he got fired, I don't think he'd be in the wrong. And as much as I love Marcus Smart and he's transformed his game over the years, he took, there was a crazy stat they had. He took 22 shots in game six. Yeah. And it's like, I love the guy to death, and he can be a game changer, and he can, he can turn a game around, but not as a shooter. And that, that was like, Kemba had half the amount of shots in that game, and yeah. Jason Tatum had like, had like 15 or 13 or something. So, I mean, you want your best players obviously taking that, those shots. And also, I don't know, man, you want to get to, like, you want to get to these players and tell them, don't do that. Well, hold on. See, that's what I don't think, and I'll add Tom into this too while Phil takes care of his son for a second. I don't think Stevens has a backbone. I don't. I think that Stevens has no clue how to coach a group of professionals because he was so college coach driven when he was with Kentucky. That's my overall take on it. I think what he says goes in one ear for these players and out the other. I think he has no say over some of the things that the Celtics do on the court. Yeah, no, I agree. And, uh, I mean, so I, I saw a tweet somewhere, or I saw, not somewhere, I saw a tweet the other day from, I don't, I forget who it was, but. Probably um, mine. It's, it, <laughs> it, said, it said that the Celtics should just get rid of everybody except for Tatum and Smart and build a team around the, just those two players. And I mean, you know, that'd be different. No, it'd be interesting. I, I, I'd love to. I'd love to hear Phil's thoughts on that. But um, yeah, oh, I was just kind of. I was just kind of surprised that it was just those two players and not, you know, at least like Jalen Brown. The question that I have here is: What are you going to do with Gordon Hayward? Do you keep him, or do you look for another team to potentially trade him? Is he, does he have any value? I think he does. I think he does. So, so that Phil, uh, I saw a tweet um, from someone that said that the Celtics should get rid of every player except for Smart and Tatum and build a team around the, just those two players. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I think your core is Tatum and Brown, to be honest. And I, I think uh, Brown's an incredible player, and I actually think he could get better. And I also think he could get – one of the things, and I know Nick will attest to this, I mean, he, he shouts this stuff all the time, and he's never – I don't think he's – when I say he's wrong, when he said when you say this, and I'm talking about they just chuck threes, I mean, sometimes that happens, sometimes it works for him, and sometimes it's calculated within the fact they drive to a basket or they pass the ball around and you find the open shot, you shoot it. When they were down in game six in the last couple of minutes and the Heat went on like a 23-6 to six run with like five to go or whatever, um, the Celtics were kind of panicking a little bit and just driving and like – Smart, uh, Tatum, and even Brown in some cases were just – were you know, they make a couple passes, but they chuck up a three. No one was going right to the basket. And to give the Heat credit, their defense was great. 
uh, and also Jimmy Butler and Iguodala. They were the people. They were settling stuff down, and and Bam Adebayo was settling stuff down. And they were just going to the basket, and they were already in the bonus. So every time they got fouled, they got uh, they went to the line. So I mean, it was a matter of being able to play hard defense is tough when uh, you don't have any fouls to give. Right. And just if you're panicking a little bit and you don't have that presence of mind to just take each possession as, as you should, cherish it, you know? Uh, and if you give it away, then you're just giving a fast break point to the other team. And that happened quite a bit. And Tyler Hero did kill them at the end of game six, but not during the rest of the game and not during game five. But uh, game four, he did. Right now, but four was his game. Basically. Four was his game. And, but you could, also, you could have won game four, too. I mean, that's the thing, too. You just let it slip away at the end. Uh, although I will say that's the true – I think the four and – four and six, to me, are the games that's like, you know, Miami won it. Um, uh, the other games the... – One, two. One, two, and – yeah, one and two. One and I two, mean, I'd so... say, are a toss-up to me. Um, I think one – you had a horrible end of game, uh, pl- uh, drawn up play for what Tatum. They hit a three. They were up like 17, 18 points, and they let that drop. I think that was game it was two. two. I believe it was game two. And even game one, they had uh, someone of the lead uh, in the fourth. And you also had Marcus right, Smart what? gave you a great game there. He, and he was playing well, and he was shooting well. He had like a 24-point right. game or something weird. And yeah. Scalabrini yeah. put it best. Five three-pointers in that game. Yeah, and as Scalabrini put it best, uh, Brian Scalabrini, a commentator, former player for the Celtics, you wasted a good Marcus Smart shooting game and an overall great game from him on that. And I'll, so the end of regulation, because I think that went into overtime. That was an overtime. But the end of regulation of that game, you had you were tied up. You were down by one with the ball, but then Marcus Smart beautifully uh, got fouled uh, as the ball was being inbound. And when you're, you know, before the ball gets inbound, if someone fouls anyone, then it's straight to the line. You get one technical shot, and then you get the ball. So they got that. They got the ball. Uh, they got the shot, made the bucket, and then they had the ball to uh, to go up. Pretty much, you didn't need a three. Uh, you could just, you know, take a take it to the basket. And they drawn a play that had uh, Tatum kind of just iso and shoot up a three. And he he was close-ish. He was short, but. He was, I don't know. It was just a weird play. Like, have him drive to the basket. I don't, but then again, he got, he got stuffed by Adebayo, you know, at the end of OT. I that I was from just watching afar and seeing them sit back at the three-point line and trying to make shot after shot after shot after shot after shot. You are not going to outshoot Miami. They had much better shooters. So I don't understand how Stevens can't Get that into his head, change your system, drive to the hoop like they did in game three and five when they got the win. Why did they abandon that? Well, That's I mean, what I don't understand. Yeah, no, they were making three point shots in those games too. And I think it's more, it's more or less who takes the three point shots. And I think, uh, I figured who said, it. I think there was a Boston Globe reporter was talking about, oh no, Jack McMullen was talking about. I don't know if she writes for the Globe anymore, but she was talking about uh, how. Um, oh man, I was going to say Jason Bateman, but that no, there's I'm like uh, Gordon Hayward, but uh, how Gordon Hayward um, was not 100 percent at all, and probably was four weeks away. He came back four weeks early. She said. She said he will never say that, but that's what happened. But he was taking shots. He was trying to get back in the game. He, uh, game five, he did. He uh, had a couple great shots in there, and even game six, he had some decent ones, but. The three-pointer was not falling for him, and he was trying, but normally it does. And he's one of those guys that can fall for him. And even, um, like, the three people you have to shoot threes, or even four, Brad Wanamaker, uh, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Kemba Walker. And you can throw in uh, Grant Williams when he's open on the side. You can make them. Like, all these – honestly, a lot of these people can make threes. And even though Miami has a couple more uh, designated snipers – I think they can go toe to toe, and they did a little bit. But the the seeds were great at running them off the three, and uh, kind of challenging the three. But Miami didn't have a that good of a shooting series three wise. Uh, but I don't know. It's yeah. I think I think you are ultimately right. It goes back to when you open up the lane and or you go to lane, open things up. It work. You know, works out for your team. So I mean, long story short, yeah. They sh- at the end of that game, they should have went. Um, you should have drove to the basket a little bit more. 
but that's, you know, an experience. Sure. And I think, uh, a coach can only do so much for some players. But I think, you know, I maybe you get rid of smart. A dime a dozen. I agree. It takes the talent to produce onto the floor. That I totally agree with you, Phil. So coaching, yeah, in a way, it's a little overrated. I mean, look what Kyrie just said today about Steve Nash, the new coach that's coming in. Um, oh, right. what do you say? Screw him. I'm going to do my own thing. Me and wow, Steve, really? Me and KD are going to do whatever we want. We can coach this team ourselves. That wow. was the state said today to the Athletic. My so, God! Very eye-opening. Not surprised. Well, why? That bag, but that's just how it is. No, and I think, but I think there are differences. I think people like the Heat took coaching well. Like they were all doing their own thing, and also maybe you attribute that to Jimmy Butler and Andre and Iguodala. You who, give credit to Eric Spoelstra too. Yeah, I, I think so. Better coaches in the NBA, I truly do. I think they buy into the philosophy of what he tries to preach and and coach with, with those players. But when you put a guy like with LeBron, does it really matter who the hell the, hell the head coach is with the Lakers or with the Heat or with Cleveland when LeBron's there? No, because LeBron runs the show. I think there are mitigating factors, but I do think uh, star players will have their say. But uh, to, my, uh, to Miami Heat and Spolstra, I think you also you have Jimmy Butler leading the way, and you have Andre Iguodala, who's been there before with Golden State. And I loved him when he was with Philadelphia, and I loved him when he was with Golden State. He was a uh, Finals MVP, so I mean, he helped lead the way. He wasn't he wasn't as effective in those other games. In Game Six, he was fantastic. Game Six, he was the man. He was Absolutely. he put a nail in that coffin. But uh, we could have had him. I guess it was too much. We also there's a uh, a guy in the Bobcats. Depth really hurt you. Your bench depth throughout this whole thing really hurt. I, I mean, think I would rather have an Iguodala coming off the bench than uh, Ennis Canner or a Semi Ujale or a Grant Williams. It's a more sexy kind of name if you are experienced and have got the job done in the NBA versus the unknown. I, I think the Celtics are in a good place to be yeah. honest, but. Range, I think was too emotionally or physically attached to some of these guys. I don't know. Speaking of which, you just said the same the thing that I was just going to ask you there, Phil. So the Celtics go into the off season right now. They come off another disappointment. They didn't get to the finals and didn't get another championship. So where do they go through? Where, what do they do from this point moving forward? I have my philosophies that are going to happen because I am more of a instant kind of reactionary kind of person. But if you are really invested in this Celtics team, what's got to happen to get another, to get this championship with this group? You need it. You need at least 15 more draft picks. Um, You need to just keep stockpiling draft picks after draft picks and just look at them and be like, okay, I like what I see. Not going to do anything with them. Uh, Let's move on. Uh, but no, I, I, in all seriousness, I think that maybe a rim protector, maybe a tall, because the great thing about the C's is they ran small and that was part of their, uh, well, that was part of their strength, but that also would be their weakness if they came across someone like Bam Adebayo, who would kind of dominate you in a lot of ways, or like an Eric Adams from uh, Oklahoma or uh, Embiid from Philadelphia. And sometimes when you have a big that can dominate you and no one else you know, everyone else is like Dunzo and not really that much of a threat. You can deal with that. But you'll need a proper rim protector and or someone who can be offensive minded too. Like, and those guys are tough. They're tough. I mean, maybe like Robert Williams is someone, if they, he develops his shot, maybe he becomes kind of that guy and it becomes more defensively sound, sure. But in the meantime, you get like maybe get a DeAndre Jordan or get some, some old vet to, uh, I don't know, rim protect. Ennis Cantor isn't a bad – like, he's a decent offensive weapon down there, and he helped you out in game five. And he was a he was a desperate move and good go-to by Brad Stevens because he was creating problems off the pick and roll and down low. But you, you might need someone younger and more versatile to go up and down, like to really run the floor and cover the three-point line. That's kind of the thing, too. Uh, Bam uh, was able to cover and switch without real much uh, problem. And you need uh, that kind of defender, not just a rim defender, but just like a, a real no- lockdown defender. And Tice, if Tice had like three or four more inches, that would be great because he's like six nine, six ten. But yeah. 
So we'll see what happens here throughout all of the changes that happen in this off season, if there's any changes at all. I think you know my stance, but I'm not going to repeat my stance again. We'll see what happens with the Celtics and go Heat. I'm rooting for the Heat. I don't think it's going to happen. I think LeBron's going to get this very simple layup as a championship, and that's why. That's we'll, we'll see the next game, but uh, yeah, I uh, I think the the Lakers are going to win it if if last night or the game one was any indication, and if the Heat are banged up, it's going to be yeah. tough. Be but fun. hey, you know what? Uh, tragic if he's out, put Tyler Hero in, and then that's your starter. And you might even do better, to be honest. You might. You might. Uh, Tom, I know you were itching to talk about the Stanley Cup. So Tampa has raised the cup. Sam Coast and Kovalchuk and all the jerks from Tampa have got their cup. Um, I wanted Dallas. It just didn't happen. I, it, it was a, it was an okay series, I will say, at least from a fan perspective. But ratings wise, it was the worst Stanley Cup viewer wise I think the NHL has ever had. Um, first of all, I just want to say, don't you mean Tampa, the Tampa Bay Lightning? Lightning. Uh, second, I want to apologize because last week I said that the Lightning were already up three to one. I was wrong; they were only up two to one. Um, I guess I just want. I guess I just wanted the finals to be over. Um, and and third thing I want to say is there's always going to be an asterisk next to this one, so I really don't care what the final result was. I really didn't either. I didn't really watch anything of it because I'm really not super super invested into those two teams who are in the Stanley Cup. If Vegas were in it, I might have watched a little bit more, but the Bruins weren't there, so. It was one of those things where I just didn't get myself really into it. I want to ask you, though, a couple questions on the Bruins. For the yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't really – I wasn't really buying into it from the start. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I tried was, to watch it, but it just – much as I like playoff it, wasn't, it just wasn't – there's always going to be an asterisk. Have, when you just don't have the fans there, it just – it doesn't seem right to me. It wasn't as exciting. It wasn't as thrilling as it always has been. Tory Krug's name has been coming up quite a bit, and I've been hearing that the Bruins are trying to trade him. Why? Uh, because his, uh, his, his contract's going to be up, and he's got a lot of good value. Is that a good um, move or a bad move? What? Is it a good move or a bad move? I mean, I guess it all depends on who you're asking. I mean, My question I, to you is if you were – Don Sweeney, do you trade him or do you try to give him some sort of a deal and find some common ground? Do you think that they just can't put a common ground number together? Is that what this is? No, I, 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 think, they, I think they could, but um, he, he'd, be, he'd just be too good for any, any, any deal that we would be able to give him. So – I'm concerned on this, and the reason why I'm talking about it is because we've heard from Krejci, we've heard from Bergeron, we've heard from Marsha, and we've heard from all these guys right here that this window is closing. I, if you don't go all in right now and do everything you can to potentially get some sort of a product out there that's going to win a cup, what are you doing? Um, so... Rumor, rumor is that the Bruins. I, I forget. Um, I forget one of the players' names, but the other player that they they could be potentially looking to go after is Josh Anderson from the Blue Jackets. Um, I like the move. Tell me about I, it. Who, I would love. I would love to have him on the team. Uh, he okay. kind of had an off off year um, this past season. But the season before, he's an incredible player, and I think he would. Uh, I think he would do well on the Bruins. Where does he slot in? Uh, Nick Ritchie. So bye bye. Okay, so you would put him third line if I'm. Yep. Okay, third line. You keep him with Coil. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you put him with Coil. Because that you you don't think he can go to the second line, or do we like the second line the way it is right now? I like the second line the way it is. That's your crazy DeBrock and it was your uh, depending on. So we'll see how that all goes. 
I am still curious to see what happens with Tuca. I'm curious to see if there's some sort of move, if he's staying, going, retiring. We'll have to see on that front right there, too. So the season will start, I think, up again within a month or so. Is that uh, right? In November. I don't know. I forget the exact date, but in November. We're on October. We're on October-ish right now. And we have roughly about a month-ish or so. So there's not that much stop. You know, if you win the cup, that's basically over. You get about a month, relax, and then you jump right back into the season. Let's turn the page next on to baseball. And I do want to compliment Major League Baseball because as much as all of these different teams are in this wild card format in this best of three setting, it's exciting. I will give them that. I will tip my cap to baseball and say that you got me interested in watching a White Sox and Oakland game, a Yankees and Cleveland game, a Tampa and Blue Jays game. But what I will say is I do think it is a little drawn out. I think it's opening up the door. Like the Houston Astros were under 500. They did not have a winning record. And now they just won their best of three series. They are going to represent in the ALDF against one of the opponents. I don't think that's right. That's just my take. Yeah, I mean, uh, I haven't really been paying too much attention to it. I, I just don't really care. So I watched a little bit of it. it, it it's something. I, of course, would much rather see the Red Sox there representing in some sort of end. But it, the it, who? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I'm going to try my best to watch it as a fan and see how it goes. I am glad that that extra inning bullshit rule with a runner on second and you have um, – if that extra inning runner goes on second and whoever scores first basically is the winner, I'm glad that is gone. Didn't like that rule. Don't like that rule. I'm completely ex- uh, opposed to it. And that's just how baseball has been this year. Um, I do want to talk about the Red Sox because, yes, their season is done. And now we'll start the off-season mode for the Red Sox. We heard the afternoon before the last game, which was Sunday, that Ron Renneke will not be back for manager. And that was most, my most exciting bit of news for the Red Sox this offseason because that manager, that man, whether he's nice or not, I'm not taking that away from him. But what I am taking away from him is he was even worse than Bobby Valentine. That is amazing to me. That manager was the worst choice and worst possible person to put in that spot that I've ever seen in my life. And I understand that they were left in a tough spot with Cora being suspended and everything for the year. But that was utterly atrocious. Unwatchable. So my question here to you guys is now that Ron Renneke is, bye-bye, see you later, never existed. Who's your manager for 2021? Who's the manager? Cora. Cora. Cora? Phil? Yeah, Cora. And like you said, uh, Ron Renneke is a horrible human being and may – and maybe burn in eternal flames. No, no, I, Nick, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with this. Listen, I understand you had to say it. Everyone needs to know. He's a train wreck of a human being. Yes, it's awful. Um, no, I don't. That is actually, it is with the weird thing. It's just kind of like, but he was kind of foisted into this weird spot. It's just kind of like, listen, you're going to, well, it's almost exactly like Bobby Valentine, isn't it? Because now, yeah, I mean, he was like put into this, like, Listen, we're not going to be very good. <laughs> Just be entertained. Well, not for uh, uh, this year. It wasn't be entertaining. It was more or less be nice enough to be forgotten. And like honestly, I had to be reminded. I forget. I yeah. forget. Yeah. I will say though, none of us thought it was going to be this bad. At least I didn't. I didn't think I was going to sit here and say, "Oh, I can't even watch the Red Sox." That was so so bad. Reminds me of when I was a kid. I mean, I guess, I guess I still kind of am. But when I was 10 or 11, when the Red Sox, the 2001 Red Sox, one of the worst teams that I had ever seen, when we had so many injuries, Joe Kerrigan at the time took over as interim manager. It was a – Oh, that was – um two, that was like 99 to – oh, no, that was 2000? No, 2001? 2001? Yeah, oh, Williams, no. Williams was fired. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Yeah, because when did uh, – because 2001 is when Manny showed up. Manny showed up in 2001. Yep. 
Yeah, so that was, uh, oh, was it that year? They didn't do that. Uh, that was the year that Nomar, Nomar had the wrist problem. So Nomar was oh, out there. Oh, yeah, that's right. A little bit. So they had, they just didn't have a very good product that was out there. But Manny was well, an RBI machine. <laughs> he really was oh, that year. Manny was awesome. That was one of the best signings that they've ever done. Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> he just... He's doing like uh, uh, that Beastie Boys check your head. I got, I got kicked out of my, my spot that I was in. <laughs> That's pretty great. Interesting. Um, so, yes, I agree that I, I would go for Alex Cora to come back and be your manager. I think that it will happen. I'm pretty confident that it will happen. But it's going to have to start a rebuild in a way. And what I mean by that is your luxury tax, uh, threshold is now reset so you can go out and you can get some new free agents and some new players is there anybody on your wish list that you hope that the Red Sox go out and get to bake a better quality product uh, a pitcher Duh. Any, name anybody because I got a couple on my on no my I, can't, I can't help out I'll be as blatantly I mean I don't I would look at Trevor Bauer, Trevor Bauer, who was representing Cincinnati. Um, I would look at that. I think he would be a quality addition to the team. I think that that would help with giving somebody. I don't think Tom deserves the camera on him right now, Phil. I'm just. Oh, no, it's on you. Don't worry about it. Oh, it is. Okay. What are you doing, Tom? What do you mean? You're like. Every it time does I look. I, I like my heart drops a second. It's like, holy crap. It does look like you're like trying to get away from like someone who's chasing you with like an end show background. So it's that much more crazy. You're doing like a weird like hope no one sees you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like I'm reporting to you live from somebody's basement. (laughs) Just make sure just just, just, just exit him out. Like please don't Oh he's good. See ya. Bye. Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer would be very good. I know um George Springer is a free agent for the Astros. I don't know if I would go about it. Do you bring back Jackie Bradley Jr.? For the cheap, if he can – is it the end of his contract? Jackie Bradley actually had a 283 average this year. It's not bad Remember, for him. Not bad. He had his best uh, season. I mean, the – so, I don't know what they're going to do with that. I uh, seem to me as all the – uh, end of season things are coming, and seems like Jackie Bradley was parting ways with Boston. I wouldn't be surprised if that was it. I mean, I'm going to miss the glove. I'm not going to miss the bat. Yeah. So I think that I think he's I think he's replaceable. You know, in in a sense, if the Red Sox go out and get somebody that can you know step into his spot and deliver, I think that they have some guys down in the, uh, the minor leagues that can get the job done, and I'll be curious to see what they do. I do think the product next year will be much more competitive and better. So we'll see there. Do any of you have a particular team that you think is going to win the World Series? Or in contention to? Uh, you know what? I hope Toronto does. Well, no. Yeah, I kind of hope. On the They're on the brink of elimination. So they have a game tonight. So if they are, they got to win two games in a row against the Rays. I saw the Yankees and the Indians. The Indians are now eliminated, so the Yankees are in the oh. ALD. I really think that this could be the year for the Dodgers. I think it could be, yeah. Finally, I think that finally the Dodgers will get over that hump and they will be. I'd be okay with it. And Mookie Betts gets to be a back to back, oh, not back to back, but he gets to be a champion with the Dodgers. So. Yeah. Oh, it um, seems like it's back to back, though. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say. Okay. I'm going to say it's going to be a Tampa Bay championship season this year. Oh. <laughs> why not? Hey, why not? Honestly, like, why not? Miami's going to end up beating the Lakers, and then it's going to be all Tampa Bay for the other leagues. Yeah, Tampa's going to become a new Boston. <laughs> well, yeah. No one's going to want to go. Whatever it is. Yeah, no one's yeah. going to want to go. Yes. But no, but it's going to be the new Boston because there are going to be that many people from Boston and Tampa. That's just how yeah. it goes. Yeah. Any other final things on sports? Because I do have something exciting to talk about regarding a completely different topic that I am, I, I have a project that's going on. So any other things? I on actually sports? had something today. Go ahead. Ben. <laughs> Me too. Go ahead. I got nothing else on sports. Go ahead. Yeah, I meant go ahead on your, in your special oh. thing. 
Um, well, oh, and, and for any of those that of you that are, you know, yep. are into it, uh, The Office is going to be off Netflix coming <laughs> January 2021. That's good to know. It's going to be off or on? Off Netflix, yeah. It's going to, uh, Peacock is going to take it over. So it's just going to go to another platform, basically. It's just going to go to another streaming service that you're going to have to pay a monthly subscription. Well, actually, I, a Peacock is free, but there is if a you're paid Comcast. service. No, it's a it's free. Uh, you can it's free for everyone, but they have a they have a paid version of it too. But uh, and some stuff is free on it. Actually, a good amount of stuff is free, but it's still commercials. But it's not the worst. But it is annoying that everything is shifting. I mean, what's the difference between having cable and streaming services then? Right. right, you're basically going to be paying the same amount. Yeah, I'm or the same for. structure. Why, why spend two hundred dollars on cable when you can go and get some things free, whether it's Swing TV or yeah. Well, online. that's that's true. That's actually a good or you know, uh, Flex or whatever. Something like that, but yeah, that's a good that's a good point, Tom, for uh, bringing that up. So another streaming service will have uh, the Office. So what was your take? Well, not much of a take, but just. Uh, you know, it's it's October first. It's Halloween season. I would say, like, pretty much fall begins. The first day of fall is Halloween season. I would uh, I would implore people to watch a horror movie a day, and you shouldn't don't go outside. You know, you should do it anyway. You should watch a horror movie every other week, anyways, because you know, if you're not like me, you love it. It's it's fun, and uh, I recommend Shutter is another great uh, streaming. This is all we're just. We're getting paid by these streaming services to mention them. Oh, That's yeah. why we're doing this. But Shutter is a nice one. It's owned by AMC, I believe. That's S U S H U D D E R. Shutter, as in, uh, uh, it's good. It's not not too expensive a month. It's like it's five for the month, and you might even get it free for one month. But yeah, there's a lot of great uh, flicks on there, and I'd recommend a movie to start it off with, which I actually haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to. And I love the guy who directed it. But uh, Doctor Sleep is supposed to be pretty fun. And uh, a nice horror flick. So I, I recommend, you know, watch a horror movie. It's a uh, Halloween month. It's October. Enjoy yourself. Uh, Halloween might not happen as it has before, just like the rest of this year. But do your do your best to prepare and keep safe. And yeah, that's a, it's a full it's a full moon tonight too, and on Halloween this year. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for yeah, that's right. It's going to be like a full blue moon. Yeah, on Halloween, which is and on yeah. Saturday night, which is kicking the pants. Thank you, 2020. Uh, my thing is, I'm going to leave you with a cliffhanger here, folks, and I am going to make a statement, and then we'll talk about it on our next show that we do. I want you to think about something, and what I want you to think about is, I want you to figure out if the statement that I am going to tell you is true or false. I want to give you a little bit of some hints and clues, and we'll talk about it next week, because we had Tom and we had Phil talk about their special thing. First statement I'm going to make. I have a YouTube channel that has almost 50,000 subscribers to it that is related to some sort of TV program from back in the day. That's your first thing that I'm going to say. The second thing is I am going to be in the process of interviewing some famous celebrities who may have appeared on this show back in the day. That's the second thing. The third thing is this channel is on YouTube, true or false. So those are three statements that I said there. Wonder if they are false, wonder if they are true, who knows? I'm gonna leave you on that note. I want you to do your homework right there and try and figure out what it could be, what might my interest be on it, if it is my interest at all. Come back next week and maybe we'll have that answer for you. That's my thing today. Hmm. Very, very interesting. I'm already confused, but yeah, it's later. <laughs> I, I was I was confused before I even listed the three things. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what if get, uh, I'll just look back at the tape. <laughs> so, for anybody who knows me, maybe I'm lying out of my you know what. Who knows? We'll leave you on that note. Think about it. We'll talk about Nick's it. Nick's gone crazy, everyone. Going crazy. Must be the blue in me today. Um, and we will see you next time on another episode here of Face to Fast, virtually, of course. Um, for Nick Faith, we'll go to Phil uh, next. Tom Smith. Tom Smith. Phil. And Phil Haley. We will see you no. next time here on another episode of <laughs> Face to Fast. See you later, everybody. <laughs>